So I really wanted to get into a cycle of doing a class in TypeScript a day to kind of get warmed up with this project I'm working on. And part of that I wanted to go ahead and review with people uh, the process and thinking of actually building these classes which is not a direct copy of existing code even though it's kind of following an existing architecture and why do you do certain things in certain ways so I'm gonna get right to it and the intention for this video is to review a class that some people know about um, that exists in many different languages called a linked list now uh, a linked list why would you use a linked list uh, versus an array. Uh, well, in, depending on what languages you're talking about and compilers and optimizations, um, typically speaking, a linked list is, actually has a very simple structure where you have different nodes okay, that are linked together. So in this case, we have a class here that's called a node uh, that carries a value and has a previous and a next um, reference to it that is of the same type. Uh, and, and in this case, we've set up this internal uh, class called a node that is going to uh, chain all these values together. Now this is going to be, even though this is an intro video, this may be a little bit advanced for some people. So um, I'll try not to do too much uh, talking about um, basic language usage and JavaScript and C Sharp. Hopefully you've already got some level of knowledge about um, whether it's C-sharp programming or JScript, uh, things that you know people are going to really look at this and go, it looks very familiar if they've done any action script programming uh, or maybe even higher level JavaScript programming is going to look really, really familiar. The differences that you're going to run into if, for say, you're a JavaScript programmer is TypeScript is typed. And there's plenty of videos on uh, YouTube that can cover um, how to use TypeScript in a sense of having typing. Um, and typing typically is, you know, declared by if you want to have a property called list uh, it's defined by a colon that, that says hey this is the actual type that I'm going to be using so we're going to walk through this step by step just kind of going through the code um, I went ahead and obviously I already wrote this most of it but we're going to end up doing a little bit of coding to polish off this class uh, so what we have is a basic interface why did I do this um, it's mainly because the beauty of TypeScript is it has this, infer this inferencing that allows you to make a definition of, hey, what does this thing make up? You know, what, what is it? What does it do? I mean, if, obviously, you know, if you know interfaces, then you'll kind of understand this. But it's actually pretty extra awesome in TypeScript because of this. You, you can actually have something that follows this interface, but you didn't declare it as being of that interface, but as long as it fits this exactly, it actually will be okay with it. It won't um, be upset at you for, for trying to use something that is mapped to this iLinked list node. Now, we've got this thing called node that doesn't have export on it. It's just a class. And well, why did I do that? Well, it's because you have a linked list. Now, if you were to go look at, say, the C Sharp example here, uh, you'll see that um, the actual exposed uh, class, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to kind of maybe uh, zoom out a bit, is I've got this class called the linked list node that actually has just read only properties for what am I list, what is the previous node, what is the next node, what is my value, and also being able to set the value. So this is effectively a wrapper, um, a read only wrapper. Well, not totally read only because you can actually set the value, which is kind of cool. But you can't scramble. The intention is to prevent accidentally scrambling the internals of the linked list. Uh, and to do that, we maintain this all the references to a class called an internal class called node. So, moving on. Um, so some of these public methods have been exposed based upon the actual linked list definition that exists in, in .NET. So linked list has a find, it has a find last, um, it has an add last, and add first, remove first, remove last, uh, remove node is something that I've added because I didn't want to have a uh, conflicting definition between remove, which removes the actual type of the collection, versus actually removing a, maybe a node that you acquired um, by adding last here and getting this value or finding or something of that nature where you actually are 
um, in possession of one of the nodes that I've actually outputted via uh, using this linked list node. So uh, the trick here is that we're trying again. We're trying to prevent accidental, you know, screwing of things up with inside the internals of the linked list. Is it possible to screw it up? Of course it's possible so if, if you try hard enough. But again, the intention is not to allow for easy screwing up. Uh, for example, if I was to expose the node publicly and someone was to just go off and set um, the value of previous, it would totally destroy um, the internals of, of linked list because the simplicity of linked list is simply that it is a chain of different objects chained together. Now, if you're a JavaScript programmer, you're going to ask, well, why would I use this? Um, why would I use no? Why would I use a linked list over an array? Arrays are great. They're easy to, everybody knows how to use an array. You're, you, you add one to the end, you can shift one from the beginning, you can do whatever you want with an array. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that arrays do have some very interesting benefits. Uh, there are some compiler optimizations that make arrays really fast with certain types of operations. But one thing that they do fail at um, is modification to an existing collection. So, for example, if you were to run tests uh, that were to measure a linked list against a JavaScript array, what you would find is that adding to the end of an array is faster because you're not adding, you're not creating a new node every time. That's the slowness. Is adding a new node is slow. So you're obviously building this class and you're injecting it into this linked list every time you add a new value. The problem then is that uh, you know with JavaScript, you know, you're using an array and you're just adding the value and you're not really creating a class. So it's actually going to be faster uh, adding new. But where it's going to lose out is room is modifying itself, whether it's splicing or shifting or doing things that are actually making modifications to it, arrays are slow. And uh, an example of this is if I was to take and I wanted to write a queue, then that queue would be benefit would benefit by using the using a linked list internally versus using an array because a queue would simply be pulling, you would add something to the end and you would pull something off the front. And that's what linked lists are perfect for. So to wrap up this video, what I wanted to do was go over and maybe make uh, one of these methods and just kind of do a quick um, generation of one of these methods. So we'll kind of walk through this. So the first thing is, is I've got this to do to add all these methods, to add these methods. And one is, you know, add after. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, after a specific node, a specific value. Um, and to do that, uh, we've just kind of made some pseudocode that explains it. But now in TypeScript, well, how do I actually proceed here? Well, the first thing is, is am I actually going to be adding? Uh, or what am I going to be returning? Well, okay, let's follow um, follow our link here and see what the .NET class actually does for adding a link. Um, add after, whether, I, actually, this is the, that's not the right one. We want to do this one. Add after does return a linked list node after doing so, which if we get into add after, it's very similar to like add last and add first. So we're going to copy this. So here we, what we have here is add after. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we need to pass in an iLinked node. Uh, and we need to pass in a value. In this case, we're calling this an entry. This has been the standard I've been using. And now what we have is the basic signature for add after. Um, it's giving me a red line here because, oh, I need to actually return a value. So what's next? Well, let's go look and see what add last does. Oh, well, it simply just builds one and adds it to the last. So well, then what I have here is this internals that do the magic of the actual code. Um, in this case, what I'm actually going to do is we are going to go ahead and grab all this stuff. and just kind of copy it down here. Now the first thing is that we need to do is kind of ask, well shoot, I'm going to add after. Well, how do I know where to add after? Well, I'm adding after this node. Well, what I've done 
and this is kind of cheating uh, a little bit, but if you were using C Sharp or something like that and you had um, uh, correctly defined something that's protected or internal, you'd be able to reference actually internal values. So if I want to get off of node, I want to get with the actual node that I'm inserting from, I should be able to type node and then there's actually um, if you look up here, down here, you're going to see that there is an internal oops, private property here uh, called node. And that private property of node uh, is specific. So we're just going to type any. Again, it's kind of a hack. We're going to try to acquire that value uh, internally. And it's called node. call it n and it's a node. So once we have this node value internally we now have our place in the middle of the linked list. We know where we are effectively right and so to insert something after is actually pretty easy. Um, so the first thing is that we're going to do is we have a reference to this um, which is the list and actually Believe it or not, the uh, only reason we need this uh, need this reference is because we will be inserting a new entry. Okay, um, and in this case, this entry is uh, there's the value that's going into the node, and we're going to say you know um, insert inserting. Okay, I'm going to take all this stuff out. So this is kind of the basis for um, making this happen. Now. How are we going to do this? It's actually pretty simple because what we can do, since we're going to be inserting after, we know that all we have to do is say um, for our current node that we're inserting after, we're going to say n is going to be actually as our previous node, and then we're all going to, going to assign its next node as our next node. So that's how we're going to insert ourselves into that point in the chain. But the problem then becomes, well, before we do that, don't we need to um, don't we need to change or alter their references to us? Well, it's, in this case, it's better to set the in, set us up first because we're not damaging anything in the linked list by actually creating these references to start out. So n.next is what the current next node is after node. And we're going to change its position. We're going to change its reference to who is before it, right? to us, to our new, oh, um, uh, to our new inserted node. And then we're going to say to the, whatever our uh, current node is that we're adding after, we're going to say well, our next node is what we're inserting. Okay. And entry, so we're going to say, um, and and there we go. So let's review. What did, we, what did we just do? Well, first of all, emphasizing what a linked is, linked list is. It is a chain of nodes uh, in a line where they all have references forward and back. Now, if you would, if you want to insert yourself into that, well, in, if we were talking about an array, an array might have to resize itself. It might have to do some very complex things to actually shift values around. If you were to insert one in, it would have to move all the other values down the line or shift them up. In this case, you don't have to do any of that. That's the beauty of a linked list. So I hope that that was at least somewhat enlightening and not too boring. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, thanks again for watching. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this and hopefully be doing more and more videos um, that have some enlightening information uh, about ways of doing things. Um, I'm very open to feedback. I would love to hear people who uh, have different ways of doing things. Maybe there's something really cool about, oh, I was able to do the same thing you did in like three lines of code or, or whatever you're trying to do. I'm, I'm all about the discussion. So uh, leave comments. Um, contribute to the repo, whatever you want to do if you're into this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm all about sharing and making connections and, and trying to uh, essentially evolve what we do here um, as coders.